Ballet Club Battle World is inching closer and closer to its release. And in this video, we're going to showcase some animations for Null. We also have information about next month's milestone event, which character shards are going to be the big reward. And we are also diving into your questions for the mailbag because it is Mailbag Wednesday. And if you're ready for all of that and more, then Valley Club, you know what you do. Find that like button and let's go smash it. Welcome back to the Valley of Lion channel. I am Valley of Lion and I hope you are having a great day. In this video, we're going to answer all of your mailbag questions. We're doing this a little later in the week than we normally do. Normally answer these on Monday. Was out of town for Labor Day with the family. Came back with a cold. So I'm a couple days behind. That's why we're doing this video now. But I hope you are having a great day. Before we get into your questions, the data mines, and everything else, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button for more Marvel Strike Force content. Even when I'm sick, I try to get at least five videos out. Question and answer videos like this, news videos, gameplay videos, review videos, everything help your experience in Marvel Strike Force. But without further ado, let's jump into these data mines from Brother Quickdraw. He's been digging further into the files, found a way to see the animation. Since he had the file for Null, thought I'd make a video showing off his non-textured ability animations. Let's take a look at this without sound. And yeah, we can see what Null is gonna look like. This is supposed to be the bad guy, at least according to data mines of Battle World. Let me know what you think of this character. Let me know what you think of this character's animations. Uh, it looks to be a very, very strong boss, and I'm looking forward to this game mode coming. And the last we heard was quarter four of 2024, so it should be coming sometime October, November, or December. So that is uh, the first look at Null and what his animations will be like. Of course, it says Sentinel Siege Orb. That is in the game right now. It looks like Odin is going to be a five-star unlock. And there is going to be a Autumn Revolution. Marvelous rewards throughout the December. And the big things that we need to get is a Sentinel Cores, the big ticket items, Energy Blaster, Anti-Mutant Laser, and the Power Dampener. So it looks like a three-week event instead of a four-week event. Uh, the first event looks to be called Sentinels Assemble. Earn Sentinel Cores and Chance at Sentinel Diamonds. So I believe these Sentinel Cores, these are the orbs that you could open that have a chance to getting Sentinel Shards. Big jackpot of 100, but has a minimum drop of one. All right, so you're going to score points in the event, battling in Blitz with Annihilator characters, completing Sentinel Strike web milestones. So I'm not sure if this is kind of a repeat of what we had or if this is kind of uh, some difference in the data mines and it's gonna be changed when it goes live. Looks like there is gonna be a leaderboard with this event, three diamonds for Sentinel, T3, ISO 8. In this event, you're gonna get collect some of these Sentinel cores and that Energy Blaster. And on the Web Milestone, you can earn some Thanos Annihilator Orbs, Iron Legion Orb Fragments, Sentinel Assemble, Autumn Revolution, and Milestone Progress. So <laughs> lots of stuff that you get from the Web Milestone. Usually those are pretty easy to get. Associated Alliance Milestone, Battle and Raise, Collect Milestone Points from Orcus, Raise and Nodes, Earn Allied Supply, uh, Six Orb Fragments, Earn Fantastic Rewards, including Sentinel Core, Orcus Team Orb, Ciphers, T3, ISO 8 Materials, a lot of stuff there. And as far as some icons for Battle World, we look like they're in the game files right now. It looks like an Energy Icon, a Dark Dimension 8 frame for when you uh, beat Dark Dimension 8, and some currency for Battle World. Let me know your thoughts on all the things that were recently data mined yesterday. Let's move forward with the mailbag question of the week. Big shout out to everybody that left a question for this mailbag video. If you want to leave a question, like I said, the link to the Discord is down in the description. Go to the mailbag question channel. That is where I get all these questions per week from. First question of the week, why do they have to leave everything the last minute if they slow down character release and improve drop rates? Half the problems slash errors they create wouldn't materialize. They need to, man, there's not a lot of punctuation in this. They need to realize that easy play times that America's get don't apply to everyone else. My reset times in Europe are 11 and midnight. Oz and Far East are worse. Why do they keep punishing their players for their scripts? So initially when I read this question, I thought this was about Shattered Dimension, but Shattered Dimension went live on the 28th. Your question was from the 27th, so probably not about Shattered Dimension, but just let me address this since I have not in a video. I sent a tweet out about this when they announced this. I sent a, a screenshot about this on YouTube uh, as well because I was away, wasn't making videos, but this was a really, really good thing, the Shattered Dimension solution. It allowed players to get more rewards, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of rewards uh in their account unfortunately not everyone was able to beat the shadow dimension that's kind of where the problem lies but uh i, I think this was a good solution leaving the event up not changing things around uh, i thought this was a very very good solution as far as them leaving everything to last minute i think sometimes they do that and that's kind of just the nature of these live ops games you know they have to be flexible with what they're doing and react to their player base so i think sometimes they do that on purpose sometimes they have like a kind of a uh framework of where they want to go with things as far as the problems errors they create 
Now, obviously, they could do better. There's a lot of errors that they put in the game. Now, I think most of the characters that got released recently were pretty bugged. I think not Gladiator, but most of the uh, the rest of one were pretty bugged. And as far as the time resets, now, I just I normally think that these games where the dev headquarters are is where the reset times are going to be based on. Back in the day when I was playing Future Fight before I played Marvel Strike Force so about five years ago or so, uh, they, their, their dev hours were in Korea. So a lot of the hours that we had uh, for reset times and everything in Future Fight was based on the times in Korea and when the blogs would come out was like middle of night for us in America. So uh, yeah, that just, that just just kind of how games are, I think. You know, sometimes you're in a better time zone, sometimes you're in a worse time zone. Now, one thing that I did want the devs to do was allow us to switch our reset times, switch things because uh, some of that is locked into where your time zone is. So I would like them to switch that over a couple times a year, once or twice a year, just to account for daylight savings times. Uh, we have that in the US where the times it changes over. I'm not sure uh, what other countries are affected, but I mean, that's just kind of the nature of the beast, right? But I wish they would implement something that we could choose our own reset times and everything like that. It would make it easier no matter what time zone you're in. Are we going to get that Fable PC client? Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes just released theirs in July. I'm not sure. Haven't, uh, if I had heard about a, a PC client, I don't remember any kind of discussion. I don't remember the devs talking about that recently. I know when I was playing Marvel Snap, that was something big that they wanted to get out. And that was something that the devs are really excited about. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it in Marvel Strike Force. But if you guys know anything about a PC client that I've been missing, let me know. But I don't think that's on their top list of priorities. Honestly, I think their top list of priorities is improving the game, get it to a state where it's uh, current for 2024. Because uh, as we learned last year to Envoy Summit, this game needed a lot more updating uh, over the past few years that hadn't been done. And now they're kind of playing catch up with a lot of that stuff, which is why we're getting graphics update over the air changes and a bunch of other things that uh, they're trying to improve the back end of the game for. Valley, is it possible next Envoy meeting with the devs? You guys go and prepare 100% supporting each other. Uh, usually we, we are pretty aligned. Usually Envoys are pretty aligned with what uh, they want in the game and ask a few very important questions to make a few statements. First question he has here, are most slash all character release events permanently going forward to be approximately a month going forward? Even if we don't like it, at least they communicate their intentions. So I don't think they've ever said ever like a, a character events releases should be within seven days or 10 days. Uh, Hank Pym's was a long one. I think that's the longest we've had so far, but well, before Gladiator, 25 days for Hank Pym longer for gladiator and that may be a trend going forward now recently they did change the availability of the characters going to the basic ultimus mega premium and the supply store but even in that message they did say for most new characters availability of shards will be increased four months after their initial release which to me means they're gonna be farmable after four months and all players will get the opportunity to get all non-dark promotion credits to seven yellow stars by the end of six months so even if they're changing the release method of characters, I still think they want to stick to this. It does make things bad in the beginning, though. You know, if you want to play with the latest characters in PvP or PvE content, and you're kind of locked out of that, that doesn't feel good. But at least the, uh, the farmability will be there still that they committed to with this dark promotion credit, well, with this uh, diamond release. And the seven stars for engaged players farming them uh, will be there as well. So based on their recent events for Illuminati and Annihilators, it does look like they're pushing back their events for these characters, but they're kind of trickling in some character shards for some players before that. I'm not sure if this is a good or a bad thing long-term for players. If they do choose to do this, initially my feelings is this is a negative, but I guess with a lot of things that I've had negative feelings out in Marvel Strike Force initially, and then when it actually played out, it wasn't that bad. I'm gonna wait and see to see what happens with this because they haven't made an official announcement of any of this yet uh can two separate reward new two separate reward new character orbs be given one rule orb called the rework character orb this can be given alongside character orbs in this rework orb it could give in character shards rework characters of the newest team release separately give a character orb that in the center gives you the character of the week very bad odds for the jackpot usually given about one to ten shards and a few less orbs I say this using Thanos as example. I got 40,000 orbs. I, I bet that's 40,000 orb fragments, which is about what, 20, 20 orbs or so like that? I got one Thanos, one Gore, the rest Silver Surf. And, I, and yes, I would agree. That is a very, very bad drop, right? Even with 20 orbs, you're only getting one Thanos, one Gore shard. Uh, to make players happier, they could give the same amount of orbs, 25 rework orbs, 50 new characters, or, or even 30 and 10. This will make players overall happy knowing what to expect. Sorry for the second long, but I feel this, uh, but I feel if this is dressed, this could lead to more 
positive for everyone involved. I mean, they could do what they want, right? They're the devs. They want to try to make money. They want to try to make the game fun and have people have fun and get these characters while also turning a profit. And I think they're trying to experiment with things, finding the balance of it. You know, things that feel good, they want to do more. Things that don't feel good, they're going to try to do less. Uh, but it's also based on the numbers that they have. So yeah, they could do all this stuff, but uh, I'm not sure what numbers they're trying to release, what their metrics are that they're trying to release. Obviously, they are good, very, very good for the players. I would like this stuff to get more of these new character shards in my hands and not uh, not have to wait for the farm ability or wait for the character release event, which may be 21 days, 25 days, even 30 days uh, after that character's release. The most important statement I think you guys need to make, we warned you guys on Captain Britain Backlash it was going to happen. We warned you on the problems of both temporal shadow dimensions would cause some community. Uh, I am not sure if the devs feel that this was a problem. Uh, when they've talked about the Captain Britain Illuminati, uh, what they mentioned, they, they tried something different with Captain Britain. Yes, that was not most friendly, but... They did like that release because it got more uh, shards of Shuri in Black Panther Shuri in the player's hands. Got more shards of Hank Pym in player's hands compared to other release events. I know the release event came late, but uh, it, it got more shards in the player's hands. And that's what they that's what they were focused on. So I'm not sure if the Captain Britain backlash uh, overall was a negative for them. Uh, also with a temporal shadow dimensions, I love what they did to a shadow dimension and uh, and giving it access for everybody. Now, I did like the harder version of it, honestly. Uh, I am an end game player, so I do want hard content. I also realize that this is an old game, a five-year-old game, and what's hard for me may not even be accessible for mid-game or newer players. So there is that balance. Now, one thing that Doolum suggested a while ago when we were talking on the news about these temporal dimensions and everything like that, make a few different versions and then have the easy version. Everybody gets the rewards and then make it harder and harder and harder. And as you get these harder rewards, make them more cosmetic so that we could get more, uh, so we could have that bragging and stuff like that. That would be really, really good. It's important for everyone involved uh, when we get feedback to take it seriously and you know exactly what needs to be changed. Ask us, we'll provide information how to feedback in the end i'm just curious if you guys can go and united be very direct with them so they come all the nick now instead of being an ongoing issue nobody wants that i believe scopely does not want that either no scopely wants is a good game and i think they realize the problems obviously not all of them can be solved some of them they're trying some different things and are trying to experiment with new make ways of making money but a lot of it, uh, they do, when I do have the conversations with them, they do realize what the problems are. And even though they may not be able to solve them right away, it does give me hope that they know what the issues are. You know, I, I usually, when we have a dev call, they're bringing up the issues before we are. So hopefully they can solve it and give a good solution that equates, you know, not just Krakens, but free to play and everyone in between as well. Valley, with a Thunderbolts movie coming out next year, what are the odds that they make a Thunderbolt team? Red Guardian, Yelena, Ghost, Winter Soldier, US Agent, all of them seem pretty homeless right now. So as, as you know, with these teams, when they release new teams, they usually don't just rework a team and say, hey, have fun with this team. They're usually gonna sell a new character. So I guess it would be whoever's new in the Thunderbolts. I think most of these characters that you mentioned are already in the game. So maybe they could have newer versions of these characters. I think they do want to sell some of these uh, newer characters in the game. So I, I, I would like the Thunderbolts. I would like Red Hulk to get a rework. Uh, I think it would be great. You know, Red Hulk should be in the new Captain America movie as well. Uh, and I think he's part of that Thunderbolt. Maybe not, but yeah, all, all these characters. I think uh, it'd be great to have them reworked. And uh, but Scopely needs a reason for them to get reworked. So they give a good reason for them to get reworked uh, and get some profit for them for that. That would be good. But yeah, it reworks awesome. I love reworks. Uh, Valley, do you think the Turtles will become a whole team at some point? And what happens? Which character should I use with Cersei and Icarus in CC? Oh, until that happens, which characters should I use with them? So. I, I think at one point they were supposed to be a team. Uh, there was data mines of some other Eternals in the game. A uh, couple things, the two Eternals that they released, super strong. I don't think they were expecting them to be that strong, which is why I think some of the plans for the other Eternals kind of got scrapped down the road. Now, other thing is that Eternals movie, box office wise, didn't do that well. I don't think they're gonna make a sequel. So not sure if uh, financially there's a reason for them to put the other Eternals into the game. Maybe down the road they could, but uh, as of right now, the Eternals are so strong. If they added more Eternals to the game, uh, that team would be busted. And with no movie coming out, I'm not sure if that's something they want to hype. So uh, I would say very low chance of the Eternals becoming a whole team at some point, but Tangled Web works very good as a combo with them. Loki is a good pair with the Eternals as well because he allows Cersei to go in front of Icarus and you get more chance for that double tap when Icarus does his ult. 
Emma Frost also is great to allow them to get in front of a few teams as well to give that speed bar advantage. So those are who I'm usually pairing with the Eternals. Usually it's like Eternals, Loki, Emma, and someone else. Or if I'm in Cosmic Crucible, it's like the Eternals, Tango Web, and someone else. So those are, those are good pairs with Eternals because yeah, I don't think the full team is coming. Valley, looking towards Dark Dimension 7, sitting on a decent amount of Crimson Gear. Which are the first characters I should quit with Kimson? Uh, should I specifically start in a Spider Society because City is up first, Annihilators for Arena or something else? Thanks in advance. So the couple ways that you could do Dark Dimension, you could do them in order, just in your city, so you have them ready, and then you're ready for the first section in the city section. Spider Society would be a good option there because Spider Society, five Spider Society in that city section, pretty much autoing through uh, Dark Dimension. So that is a good option as well. Uh, you'll get, you have an easier time through those first few nodes as well. But if it was me, I would probably just invest in characters that I'm going to use right now. Characters like Apocalypse, a uh, character like Super Scroll, Old Man Logan is a character that I would invest in as well. And probably the Annihilators at this point because they are the arena meta. And for myself, when I'm upgrading characters, I always look for arena first. Annihilators are in arena. I always start putting some gear on them. After that, it's the raid, so I start upgrading raid teams, which makes sense for Spider Society, but I would lean into like your five best characters that you're working on right now. Spider Society is probably the way you wanna go with that city nodes, although they're all skill. So you may wanna switch out some characters for your first run just so you can get in there quicker and then build them up all the way when you're doing your second run. So hopefully that helps you, my brother. I Valley. So in the Apocalypse Saga, I need help with this one node in the Rulk part. Let's see what that is. Node one, four, circled spider weaver here you can't see that on the screen but spider weaver circled and looking at some characters uh you got a lot of orange geared characters here my brother so what i would do first is get some characters like void knight uh leader up to all right leaders already at crimson gear but i would get some crimson gear on void knight bring them up to 85 you could even do that with the other uh hive mind characters as well let's go into games so we got a little better view of some characters that i would bring up back in the day when i did this we had to build up the gamma team so i'm not even sure uh what would be great in that node but probably don't have super scroll i'm guessing because you're still working towards apocalypse so I would build a Void Knight. Spider Society is a great way to go. You got two of them here because they're mainly skilled, but you got some dual tags with Peter B and Pav with a bio tag as well. So you could go this direction. We got another bio tag in the Ghost Spider as well. Penny is missing and she's the one that gives a lot of sustain, but Peter B is the healer. So I would probably bring up Peter B because you need him for the Spider Society anyway. Spider-Man Pav, I'd bring him up. Big damage healer. I would bring up Void Knight. You have to bring up uh, Red Hulk. And final character, I'd probably go back to Hive Mind, someone like Red Goblin or so. You know, I, I would bring up characters that you're going to use later on. You're going to use the Hive Mind later on. You're going to use Spider Society later on. So I kind of lean into those. And then you have to build a Red Hulk for that challenge anyway. So I hope that answers all of your questions of the week. And if you have another question that you want answered, make sure you join the Discord. Go to the Mailbag Channel question. Ask your question there. I will answer it on this Mailbag video. And if you got some value from this video today, leave it a like. It is free. Helps out the channel, helps out that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see one of the best characters in Marvel Strike Force, rated from best to worst, every single character, check out the video up there and I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Hulk fist bump, Valley Flying, out!